Oh, hi, Anahita. This is Marcy. I'm making this video so we can study together. Okay, I'm going to do a video today on um, Freud's psychoanalytic theory and also um, psychodynamic theory. They're different in that psychodynamic theory emphasizes, uh, has different in, uh, interventions um, and at times can be a, a, a more condensed uh, type of approach to therapy. Um, I'm not going to go into slicing and dicing the differences between those two, um, but I'm basically going to give you an overview of the theory, um, the philosophical underpinnings, the approach, the interventions, the beginning, middle, and late stages, and some of the key concepts of the theory uh, by Freud. Um, and I'm going to start with really breaking it down into uh, the philosophical underpinnings of the theory, breaking it down into five areas, okay? So the first area, as far as the theory is concerned, is um, think of it as a theory regarding energy, okay? Um, energy, it, we have energy, and it's limited, and it's finite. And it's considered a dynamic theory because um, the, the dynamics are between the, the energy of sexual energy and aggressive energy. And that's what Freud um, asserts is the primary two components of the energy we have, and it's very limited. Okay, secondly, he asserts that it's a structural, th this, this theory is based on structural, and it's one, two, three, okay? Id, ego, superego, you know what those are all about. So I'll, um, I'll move on to the third component of um, Freud's uh, theory, and that it is a topographic theory. What I mean by topographic theory is you're looking at the unconscious and the conscious, two layers, okay, topographic. And basically what Freud asserts is that we are a function of our unconscious desires. That's what it's all about in his theory. And that, it, this is a little related to the dynamic part in that it is an economic theory, meaning we are our, our personhood, what we are made of, okay, is energy, psychic energy. And it's an economy, okay? There's a finite amount of that psychic energy. And um, he looks at psychohydraulics of the energy that comes in and that goes out. And since it's finite, if you're investing more energy in one area of your life, you're going to have less energy in another area of your life, okay? And then the last part of his theory is it's a developmental theory in that it is based on the five psychosexual stages of human development. And I'll go into these five psychosexual stages, okay? So I have to read from two notes. So the first stage is the oral stage, okay? He's basically saying the oral, oral stage occurs from zero to one year of age, okay? And he's saying it's your, if you don't get your needs met at this stage, you can become orally fixated, okay? And a client that does not get their needs met at this stage, and not getting your needs net, met means uh, maybe mama's not providing the milk, oral sucking the milk, okay? So if mama's not providing the milk and you need the milk to survive, are you going to trust the world? No, okay? So it makes sense that if you're not getting what you need at this stage, milk to survive, you're maybe not going to trust the world. You're maybe going to have issues with trust. That's what that's all about, Okay. Um, you might even uh, have problems in life uh, rejecting others. Um, you have a love-fear thing going on and problems with intimacy. And if you did get fixated at the stage, well, yeah, it might be hard to get close to people because, you know, how can you trust the world? You never got mama's milk. Okay, moving on. Uh, age one, two, three is the anal stage, okay? And that's the stage where you're focusing on control of your bladder and your sphincter muscles, right? Um, and it's also a stage 
where you're looking to assert your independence with your uh, your your parental figures. So if you're asserting your independence and mother or father or your caregivers uh, respond to you in a way when you're asserting your independence in a negative way, you might not want to be so out there um, with your being being independence. In fact, if you get fixated at this st stage, you might develop a dependent personality. So I'm looking at my notes. Yes, because you learn um, independence at that st at this stage, and if you get fixated at this stage, you can um, develop. Um, some dependence. Um, I think that's what I have on this stage. Let me just double check. Uh, parents' reaction can cause kids to get stuck. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's a, a you can have problems with um, dependence on people um, or expression of valid emotions. So, for instance, when you're asserting your um, your needs at this stage and parents reject how you express yourself you may learn hmm maybe it's not it's not good to express my emotions and you can get stuck there okay so that's the anal stage um, ages one to three going on to the phallic stage the phallic stage um, I consider it the com com uh, complex stage meaning that at th this stage you can have, um, you can develop the um, Electra or Oedipus complex, and that is where you have incest incestuous sexual desire for the parent of the opposite sex. And if you do not resolve that desire, then you can become fixated at the stage. And according to my notes here, um, you can become a phallic person, uh, a, f a person with a phallic character. They exploit and they intrude upon others and have no regard for their feelings. And that is, according to Freud, based on the fact that they didn't resolve the Oedipus or electric, uh, electric complex, and therefore they did not integrate the superego in their... Uh, personality, their uh, their personhood, because that's the that's the stage you develop. You integrate the super ego, that is your parents' values, um, character, moral reasoning. If you get stuck at that stage and you don't develop a um, a a uh, functioning super ego, it makes sense. You're not gonna have those parental values in there in you. So you might not uh, have the ability to treat others with as much compassion as you would if you did have parental values instilled in, upon you. And that is the phallic stage, three to six years old. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, um, it's at that stage, mommy wants, no, I'm sorry, the little girl wants daddy, and the little boy wants mommy. Little girl wants daddy, electric complex. Little boy wants mommy, Oedipus complex. Okay, moving on. Six to twelve years old is the latency stage. The this is basically where um, your sexual um, desires and needs. Uh, it's not a big focus of your life at this time. You're really focused on your. Um, your con your your connections your social connections in the world at this stage um, and what what do I have on this um, yeah you're focused on on industry on doing on growing on being um, and it's interesting because it does tie into Erickson's stage right at that time um, so that's that's that stage and the last stage is the genital stage um, that's where the phallic stage reemerges and it deals with sexual energy through appropriate social contact. So I guess I'm finished with my video now. Okay. Okay, hi Anihita, I'm back. We just covered the five psychosexual stages of Freud 
And now we are moving on to the goals of psychoanalytic and or psychodynamic therapy. Okay, now there will be some slight differences whether you're practice, practicing from a psychoanalytic approach or from a psychodynamic approach, but you can study the differences. I'm just, this is a broad overview of both. Um, so the goals through these therapies is to one, make the unconscious conscious. The second goal would be to strengthen the ego. Again, remember the ego is the executive functioning part of our personalities. It is the, um, the part that enables us to manage the kid in us that's wild, out of control, impulsive, wants to fulfill these um, desires, and managing the parental part in us. Um, and that's the superego. So the ego is in between the id and the superego, and it's managing the kid and the parent in us. And basically, our, uh, one of the goals of therapy is to strengthen the ego. Um, so that the choices are made on reality, what's happening here and now, and not based on some place we got stuck in our developmental history, uh, of whether we got stuck at the oral stage or the anal stage. Um, it's looking at the choices we make now, and by strengthening the superego, we're going to be a better manager of ourselves. Okay, so that would be a... Um, a goal in therapy um, and so moving on to another goal in therapy is insight okay we want to help the client develop insight um, and there's many ways we can do that we can do that through um, free association we can do that through dream analysis and we can do that through transference okay but our goal is to help the client develop insight as to perhaps how they are stuck at a certain particular stage or how they have certain defense mechanisms that are impairing their functioning. Um, we also want to, a goal is to um, focus on the transference and help clients understand, gain insight as to how they view or interact or communicate with certain people in the world um, based on uh, earlier learning uh, through caretakers and family. So uh, I didn't say that so well. So basically what the goal of therapy um, in regards to transference is to help clients uh, gain an understanding and insight as to why they may have certain uh, communication patterns and relationships with people that are problematic, uh, have them gain insight into that and help them learn that perhaps they are tied to their past um, relationships with their early caretakers. And uh, another goal of therapy is a catharsis, um, help clients develop this insight um, and basically, you're helping them do that through a catharsis, a release of um, energy and thoughts. Um, okay, so that is the goals. And then also the approach to therapy is um, you want to, the, the therapist, if they're taking a psychodynamic or psychoanalytic approach, they really want to have a consistent, stable format you want to be anonymous. You want to have um, ensure that you're providing consistency as far as the time you meet them. Um, really keeping um, disclosure, self-disclosures to a minimum because, of course, you want them to project. Okay, you wanna you, you don't want it to be about you because how are you supposed to analyze the transference? if you're not the blank slate. So it's very important to be a blank slate. That is the approach on this model. The second thing is very important is to get to the unconscious material 
you are going to um, promote an environment where free association can take place um, and that free association where they're moving from one topic to the other that can be a conduit to um, expose unconscious material you also want to be able to um, interpret the material um, you also want to be able to um, analyze dreams and you also want to be able to analyze resistance and transference okay so these five areas I mentioned again these are intervention approaches um, establishing an analytic framework um, establishing a forum for free association interpreting materials analyzing dreams and analyzing resistance and transference okay and with that approach it's basically broken down into three areas uh, three phases I should say stage one it's important to engage the client through um, empathic listening of course you want to <coughs> excuse me manage crisis and risk you want to assess the transference that happens in the first stage okay that's important and then you want to assess the role and the functioning of um, ego and defense mechanisms and defense mechanisms I will mention um, shortly after this the middle stage of therapy you're going to focus and identify uh, broad goals you're going to um, use interpretations to help the client develop insight so you'll see something going on with the client that's maybe related to the past you bring that material up perhaps they develop insight and they make the connection um, you want to act as a safe parent you want to offer empathy understanding and basically you want to offer them a corrective emotional experience you want to be that parent <coughs> and provide that <coughs> missing dynamic that wasn't there um, or provided by their caretakers and that's why they're seeing you now okay and um, you want to evaluate goals in that in that middle stage of therapy the last stage of therapy of course review progress look at the gains maintained and look at um, how are they gonna look at their gains but how are they gonna maintain those gains um, have a discussion about that and of course refer them to appropriate resources okay I am down to the wire here one thing I didn't mention and that's the thing to look at in Freud's theory is um, he's since his theory rests on the basis that <coughs> excuse me I think I need a drink of my um I'm drinking a Zinfandel it's not the best but it'll do it's a nine dollar wine and I'm having a cup mm. okay so final final section here again Freud's theory uh, is based on the assumption that we are governed by these unconscious desires and Freud asserts that these unconscious desires get in the way of life's functioning um, and that also our fixation at a certain stage in life can get in the way of life functioning and the way we get around those problems is through defense mechanisms and he has 11 defense mechanisms that he has identified that serve as an adaptive pur uh, purpose these defense mechanisms allow us to deal with some of these more seedy more inappropriate unconscious desires we have we deal with them by employing these defense mechanisms um, to get around them so for instance um, the first defense mechanism I'm going to mention is the uh, reaction formation okay that's defense mechanism let's just call it number one there's no particular order here but reaction formation the best way to understand it is think about it <clears throat> is um, it's the opposite it's a defense where you're doing the opposite of the unconscious desire so if a man has an unconscious desire to say molest a little kid well it's so sickening that unconscious desire he can't fathom it he can't deal with it and it 
gives him anxiety and angst. And so what does he deal with? How does he deal with that? Oh, he develops a defense mechanism called reaction formation. And he actually does the opposite of that. So instead of molesting the kid, he becomes a school counselor. That's how he defended against that ugly, impulsive desire he had to molest a kid. Okay, reaction formation. <clears throat> then we have identification. Think of identification is where somebody adopts, um, or identifies with a group, um, and they do that because it allows them to feel a part of something bigger than them, and they need that because maybe they're insecure. Okay, so think of somebody that maybe is kind of mm, wishy-washy, a little passive, a little dep uh, dependent on others. But when it comes to rooting for his favorite team, he or she is you know, all there and becomes alive. Well, because they can identify with something bigger than them. And that helps. That's a defense mechanism against their inner, perhaps more frail, and weak persona of self. Okay, next thing is sublimation. Um, sublimation is a little bit like reaction formation, but not entirely. Sublimation is perhaps when you have um, a desire and um, or an impulse, say aggression, okay? So say you're a really aggressive person. Um, and that that comes in the way of life because you're being mean to everybody well somebody that develops sublimation as a defense mechanism what they'll do is they'll channel that aggression say into kickboxing hmm i did that maybe i got issues with aggression but it is a defense mechani mechanism it is adaptive and it allows them to channel the psychic energy of aggression into something more um, socially palatable okay we are down to denial you know what that is it's not a river in egypt but it is a major uh, defense mechanism it's one of our most primal defense mechanism okay projection you know what that is um, we have a hard time perhaps dealing with a issue a feeling um, an identification of some part of ourself it's difficult for us to kind of absorb it, think about it, feel it. So we project it upon somebody else. So we look at somebody and, and they and we think of them as a bitch. Oh, that person's a really bitch. Because maybe that person resembles some parts of our personality we don't like about us. But it's too hard for us to look at ourselves in the mirror. So we project it. Okay, that's projection. You know what that is. Regression. Regression is you're going back to an earlier time with fewer demands and less responsibility. So the father that just wants to go back to the days when he was a high school kid and having a lot of fun, um, you might see him have a midlife crisis and start acting out. And he's regressing to his earlier years. Um, it's a, a coping mechanism. It's an, And it's an, it, because of the anxiety he's feeling at his age and all the responsibilities he has. That's regression. Okay, repression. We exclude ugly thoughts from our awareness. We know what that is. Rationalization, you know what that is. Uh, we ta basically come up with excuses and lies for ourselves. Um, displacement. Oh, that's one of my favorite. I'm really good at that. Um, whereby we may have hostile or ill feelings towards one person, but it may not be safe to tell that person what you think or feel about them. So what do you do? You displace it on another person. Um, and so instead of telling mom, oh, mom, I think you're a bitch, um, you take that energy and you displace it on somebody else and you think of the other person as a bitch because you do not feel comfortable thinking of your mom as a bitch. Okay. Although I might. Okay. Introjection interjection is like projection um in that projection you're projecting these uh, feelings you have um maybe about yourself onto other people interjection is 
inside, bringing it in. So you are assuming other parts of people, perhaps their values, um, maybe parents' values. So it's interjection. You're bringing it in inside of you. And I'm not too sure the functional role in that. I don't know. Maybe this could be a Q&A. You could tell me what the functional role is in interjection because I don't really get it. I think that's it. Okay, hopefully, um, good luck on your test. I, this this really covers the basics of Freud based on the MFT written exam. Um, I think this is pretty much you know what's going to be covered. Okay, love you. Good luck.